Well, happy Wednesday to everybody. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. This is the day that the Lord has made and we're rejoicing and we're glad in it. This is another edition of the Faith Room. Pastor Nate is here. I'm solo right now. We have a special guest. Uh, our co-host, Elder Cherie, is finishing up her finals. And of course, I want her to do that because that's important. So she's watching. Uh, but we appreciate our co-host. We appreciate our facilitators who will be in later this week, Friday. Thank God for all of you being here today. Come on in the room, everybody, and let's declare our day. Let's speak well of our God. And when you do that, you know what we do in the faith room. We tag and we share. I'm going to get right to it on my end. It's a wonderful Wednesday, a winning Wednesday, a witnessing Wednesday. Come on in, everybody. I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do in this place today. My brother and friend, Pastor Kennedy Young, Dallas, Texas, is going to be joining us this morning. Uh what a phenomenal voice he is in the body of Christ. And he has a word for us uh, on prayer strategies. And uh, I told him to let the Lord use him in any way uh, that he needs to be used. So come on in, everybody. Let's get uh, let's get some folk in the room today. We're going to start at 200 today. Come on, y'all. And uh, uh, we're going to believe that the Lord is going to do something major in this room today. Come on. Yesterday was absolutely phenomenal. If you miss yesterday's show, go back and watch it again uh, as we laid the foundation uh, on this series uh, that we're doing on press strategy. So come on in, everybody. Greet somebody. What's up, y'all? What's up? Sherry said, I thank God for another day. Me too, Sherry. Me too, Sherry. Candace said, good morning to y'all. Candace is speaking to y'all. Y'all going to speak back? My mama used to say, it's rude when you don't speak back. Come on, y'all. It's rude when you don't. Uh, it's rude when you don't speak back. Come on. Good morning, honey. Good to see you. Haley. Good to see you. Whitney Harris said, good morning. Ramika's in the room. Blessings to everybody. Come on, y'all. I like it when y'all talking now. Hey, we all win Wednesday. We all win. I received that. We all win Wednesday. Come on in, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I am tagging some people on my end right now, and I want you to do the very same thing. Uh, I'm tagging some people, and I want you to do the same thing. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, Miss Linda? Linda Hersey. Yes. Come on in. Good morning, Kamal. I see y'all coming in. Good morning. Come on. We family, y'all. We family. Art, what's going on, man? L.A. in the building this morning. Come on. Come on in, y'all. In fact, I haven't done it in a minute. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Come on, I haven't done it in a minute. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And uh, stress-free Wednesday, Les. I'm down with that, Les. I'm going to keep that up, Les, until we start. Stress-free Wednesday. That that That's caught my attention, Les. Stress-free Wednesday. Anybody can say, that's me. No stress today. <laughs> no drama today. Uh, come on in, everybody. I'm excited about this. Discussion on this morning. It's going to be good. What's up? What's up tomorrow? Good to see you. Good to see y'all. Come on. Dallas, Texas in the building. Stacy. Good to see you, Dallas. Come on in, everybody. San Diego in the building. Virginia in the building. Come on. Little Rock in the building. Where Jesus lives. Now you being messy. See that? Arizona in the building. San Diego again. Let's go, y'all. Let's go. Working through it Wednesday. Gina, you better work through it. It's 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 no choice. We got to work through it. Amen. Las Vegas, Nevada in the building. Uh, good morning, Miss Barbara. Good to see you. Macon, Georgia in the house. That's what Jesus said in Macon. New Jersey. Come on. <laughs> Jesus is in Macon, y'all. Turning in. Uh, let's see. I'm tagging some people, man. What's going on? Where you watching at? Where you watching at? Jacksonville, Arkansas in the building. What's up, Jay Ville? Good to see you. Temecula, California in the building. Come on, y'all. El Paso, Texas in the building. All right. Y'all see you all over the country, man. I ain't making this stuff up. All right. Where you tuning in from? Come on. Kentucky and still here. Man, we praying for Kentucky. Hey there, Patricia. Thank God that y'all are safe. Thank God that you all are safe. I was talking to my brother, Rodney McFarlane, and uh, just uh, 
you know, he's in Lexington and he said they survived as well. Good morning, Celeste. Uh, good to see y'all. Come on, Eva. Thank you. San Diego in the building. We know they go up in here now. We know they go up in the building. Come on, y'all. Tag some folk in this thing. Tag some folk in this thing. Good morning. Brittany Evans in the building. Come on, guys. Where you from? Lone Polk, California. That's up near Santa Barbara, y'all. Lone Polk in the building. What's going on? Lone Polk? <clears throat> Walk it out Wednesday. I hear you. Walk it out Wednesday. Come on, y'all. We're going to start in five minutes. Where you tuning in from? We're at 164 live right now. Let's get to 200, y'all. Come on. Hey, Nisha. Good to see you this morning. Houston, Texas. I'm sorry, Marion. Houston, Texas. My bad. H-Town in the building. What's up? Good to see you. Tracy Lou. Good to see you. San Diego in the building. Prayers for Kentucky. Absolutely. We're praying for Kentucky, man. Yes, we are. Devastation. Absolutely. Uh, come on, y'all. No drama. No, Y'all see that? Y'all see where lay, lay on this today. Lay on this today. I'm on that too. No drama, no stress, no mess. North Carolina in the building. What's up, Carolina? Good to see you. San Antonio, Texas. Wow. Faith Room, do you see how this platform is just, it's just all over the country? Come on, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Come on. We just here for some hope this morning. Somebody ought to type in, I'm here for the hope. I'm here for the hope. Good morning. Good morning. I'm tagging some folk, man. Look. Oh, somebody said, thank you, Pastor Nate. Thank you, Pastor Nate. You're welcome. Thank you for not cussing me out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being nice to me. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Uh, yeah. I'm here. Who that? Who say I'm here? I'm here for the hope. That's it, Tori. Tori said, I'm here for the hope, Tori. I'm here for the hope, Pat Hill. Marilyn Jones, I'm here for the hope. Me too. Come on, y'all. Tag a few more people in the building. We're at 174. We almost at 200. And again, remember, y'all, you're looking at Facebook numbers only. I'm looking at Facebook and YouTube and our affiliates. So I'm looking at, that's why I'm going to always say we have more because I'm looking at more people than you are. All right? So that's good. We're at 176 now. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let go. All right. I'm here for the hope. Yes, sir. That's how we here. Here for the hope. I'm here for the hope. Come on, y'all. That's good. That's good. Y'all, listen. Our Wednesday is going to be as good as our mind and our mouth makes it. Our mind. How we think this day going to go and how we speak that this day going to go. That's how it's going to go. All right, you got to start opening your mouth and believing that this is going to be a good day. I don't know who that co-worker is that you want to go off on and who messing with you. I don't know who it is in your family tripping with you. I don't know what's going on in your relationship, your marriage, your boo. I don't know. But all I know is this, your mind and your mouth determines your day. I am a witness to that. When all hell is breaking loose, your mind and your mouth. Come on, y'all. Come on, Blake. Your mind and your mouth, Blake. That's it, man. Open your mouth and declare your day. That's why we do it every morning. No, uh-uh. What good is it to start the show and you ain't created? That's it, JB. You have not created the kind of moment you're going to have. All we're going to do then is give you a good word and you ain't going to receive because you ain't created nothing in your mind. Come on, y'all. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm on a different level now. I'm tired of letting the enemy put stuff in front of me and he just going to make me feel like I'm not going. No, I'm going to overcome him, man. Come on, y'all. Where you at, saints? I'm an overcomer. I'm a believer. I'm saved. I'm on God's team. I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting from the place of victory. Do I have a witness this morning? Come on, Denise. No, park that car. And declare before you walk in that job, I will not go off today. I will not pour this hot coffee on my supervisor. Come on. <laughs> Say it. I will not pour this hot coffee on my supervisor. Say it. 
Come on, I'm trying to help somebody today. I will not get locked up today. Come on. Y'all better talk to me. I will not get locked up today. Tony Johnson, what's up, man? I will not get locked up today. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I will not. Nope, nope. They looking at me crazy, and I feel it in my spirit, but I'm not going to roll my eyes back at them. Pastor Nate, you crazy. No, Pastor Nate, real. See that? I ain't see. Somebody just said it. She said, look, talk to me. Somebody said, talk to me. All right? I'm going to talk to you then. Me and you, bro. Let's go. Okay, let's go, Cash. Me and you will talk, Cash, since everybody want a trip. Come on. I will not let my baby daddy take me there. Come on, baby mama, where you at? Hmm? Baby mama, holler at me. I will not let my baby mama. I can't stand her, but I ain't going to let her take me there. I'm trying to help y'all, all right? I will. Come on, somebody see that? Somebody say, I will not. Come on, Rich. That's it, big brother. I'm more than a conqueror in Christ. Yes, I am. I am. I am. Yes, I am. Y'all, two more minutes. We're at 215. We're at 215 right now. And we're going to start in two more minutes. Come on. I want y'all to hear my brother, Pastor K, y'all. Listen, I listen to him every week. He don't even know it. Eastgate, Dallas. Uh, in fact, he sent me his notes. I'll talk about this in a minute uh, that I'm going to use, too. Uh, I just got to get permission before I use it. So <laughs> he did a leadership piece that was just, whoo. So yeah, I want y'all to I want y'all to know you about to be blessed. More than conquerors. That's it, y'all. Come on. We're going to start here in just a moment uh, and we're going to get going. What's going on, y'all? I I see y'all tagging people and that's what it's all about, y'all. That's what it's all about. 211 right now. Come on, guys. Proud of y'all. Proud of y'all. Proud of y'all. Good deal. I'm tagging a few more people here. Man, it's so many people who are not on Facebook, but you can go to YouTube. Faith Room, can y'all do Pastor Nate a favor? Will you go subscribe and like our Facebook page? I mean, I'm sorry, our YouTube page, The Faith Room with Nate Stewart. Can you go over there after we get off and do that for me? I think we're over 600 now. We're close to 9,000 on Facebook, but I want y'all to do that for me. I, I, and I declare we'll be at 10,000 uh, active followers on Facebook by, by the end of the year. We're close. So I want us to get there, y'all. I want us to get there. Come on in. Good morning. All right. I'm going to tag a few more people here and then we're going to get going. Y'all, listen, I'm excited about today. Uh, how many of you were blessed by the prayer discussion on yesterday? How many of you were blessed by the prayer discussion on yesterday? How many of you were truly blessed? What stood out to you on yesterday with our prayer discussion? Anything that caught your attention yesterday? Anything, we, we define prayer. Uh, remember that we define prayer as what? Prayer is communicating. So I'm speaking, but then we talked about prayer was what? Prayer was what? Listening. So I'm pausing and I'm listening. And then we said prayer was what? Submission. Remember, I'm submitting to what? I'm submitting to the answer that God gives. I'm submitting to the answer that God gives. I'm not going to argue with God. I'm not going to fuss with God. I'm not going to throw all these temper tantrums with God, but I'm going to say, God, look, I surrender because every good prayer ends in Jesus name, according to your will. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, Brittany said it, Brittany, we talked about that. Prayer doesn't have to be deep. Prayer doesn't have to be deep. And that's good, y'all. We talked about Matthew chapter seven, where Jesus said all these words, big words and long prayers. That's it. Everybody's saying that that's what caught you. Uh, Veronica said prayer is talking and active listening. That's good. And that's what prayer is. It's not just, it's not just talking, but I'm actively listening. I'm not Richard Miller said it yesterday. I'm not listening to respond. I'm listening to get direction, right? I'm listening to get direction. Some people are listening just to talk back, but I'm listening for what I'm listening for what direction. All right. So we got to be quiet. That submission part. Y'all, a lot of y'all are, are putting that in. That submission part did it for you. Um, and so we said this on yesterday, guys, that prayer um, is also patience. Prayer is also patient because sometimes we have to wait. We have to wait on God. We, we have to be patient in the request. And that could be our healing. That could be our breakthrough. 
We got to be what? We got to be patient in the request. Come on, y'all. We got to be patient. We got to be patient in the request. Well, let me see what Makisha said here. Makisha said, I was blessed. I know that I can just talk to God and don't have to put on any airs and listen with obedience. Come on, Rich Miller, that layaway part, trusting that it's coming, lay away. Some of y'all are deep now. Some of y'all can buy it off the rack and you ain't got to put it in that little room in the back until your first check come, first and 15. Y'all know them first and 15 checks hit different when you're on that budget. Come on. And so layaway, we talked about that yesterday for those here for the first time. We talked about how layaway simply says this. Um, you go ahead and pick it out. You go ahead and put it in the cart but you can't take it home. They take it in a holding room and there's some things you got to pay on. And sometimes God does that. Some of us are tripping. Listen, y'all, we're tripping and we're, we're, we're going through all these emotional responses because we feel like it's not coming. Some of you have some stuff stored up for you. Okay, give me Bible. The Bible even declares, thank you, Holy Spirit, the wealth of the wicked, here's this word, is stored. Come on, somebody. That, that, that is the wealth of the wicked is stored for who? For those who are righteous. So there are some blessings that God has already prepared for us. Come on. And here's some things we got to do. We got to make some payments. Here, Okay, Pastor Dave, what do you mean? You got to get some stuff out of your heart. Y'all talk to me. You got to get some stuff out of your mind. Uh-huh. God said, I'm going to give it to you when you grow up. Uh-huh. I'm going to give it to you when you start forgiving people. See, that forgiveness is keeping your blessing in layaway. Uh-huh. Your nasty attitude is keeping your blessing in layaway. Y'all ain't saying nothing to Pastor Nate. All right. Let me bring my brother in right now. And, um... Uh, I know you're going to be blessed today, and uh, I want you to welcome him to the faith room for the first time, y'all, from Dallas, Texas, Eastgate Church, Pastor Kennedy Young. Y'all give my brother some love. Come on. What's up, my man? How you doing, bro? Hey. What's up, man? Hey, I didn't tell everybody that uh, that you're my 21st friend. I didn't tell everybody that. You're the oh, 21st yeah. friend in my life, uh, <laughs> and so uh, exactly. let, let everybody know. And, and you go on and let them know. Just just show them the sign of. Yeah, of yeah. We 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 are bros. Uh, er, er. All right, so that's a we, whole nother conversation. Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Uh, <laughs> good to see you, little bro. What's up, man? Likewise, man. All is well, man. Here with this volatile weather here in Dallas, but it's all good. Right now, we ain't gonna mess with Pastor KJ's screen. Y'all see, Sheree not in here because Sheree would have had him turning that thing, so both of our boxes would look the okay. same. My bad. I got you. I got you. Am I right yeah, now? Watch this. Am I right now or what? Let me see. No. Uh-uh. Uh, oh, no. See? Get it? See? No. You, you upside down now. See? Okay. Like, right. Keep playing with it. See, my, my business manager, Stacy. if she was on, she would have me right. But, but see, Stacy, see, she. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. I, That's all this, good. This, 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 uh, this the yeah. Dallas Oak Cliff Ministry uh, little box thing I got going. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's good, bro. Listen, we ain't gonna worry about it because it's not about it, it's not about the look today. It's about the content. Hey, KJ, I, I've learned this, Kennedy, man. I, I have first of all, man. Thank you for being a brother and a friend. Thank you for encouraging me, man. Thank you for yeah. every pastor needs that. Every pastor needs to be encouraged, man. And Pretty you good. encourage Pastor Nate, man. And 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 everybody don't everybody are not encouraging. Yeah. Uh, some people are just takers. They don't encourage, though, man. But you've been yeah. a you've been a great consistent friend, man. And I appreciate that so much, man. There's a quote by D.L. Moody that was very powerful, man. D.L. Moody said, every great movement of God can be traced to a kneeling figure. Mm. Mm. That was very powerful for me. Every great movement of God can be traced to a kneeling figure. That's somebody who's praying. When, when you want to really see a revival and a move of God, it's mm -hmm. always traced back to somebody who's praying. And Kennedy, right. before you start, I want to ask the room this question, little bro. I want to ask the room. I want to ask the room and see who's going to be honest. Is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? Mm. Wow. I'm going wow. I'm I'm to pause a minute, Kay, and I'm going to let you release. Is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? Or is prayer your spare tire? Man. Kennedy, on that quote, man, I want you to be 
used of God today. Y'all, Kennedy Young is one of my favorite teachers and preachers. <laughs> I don't say that to everybody. I don't say that about everybody. No. no. Oh. <laughs> but Kennedy, is that in my life? But is prayer your steering wheel or your spare time? That is a great question. Man, help us today, Kennedy. However the Lord is going to use you today, uh, give us some hope, man, on building this prayer life, man. Right. Well, I think that um, prayer is is definitely essential. Not only is it essential, but it's empowering for us to continue uh, to be a, a, a vehicle in the ventricle of the kingdom. And so that helps us start our day. It helps us stay afloat during the day. And it gives us stamina for the things that God desires for us to have. And so that's what I believe prayer is. Today, I want to uh, come from the English Standard Version of the Bible today, Matthew chapter 6. I want to go to a familiar passage of scripture, uh, but I want to take a unique uh, peek into it as we share uh, from this, this word today. Matthew chapter 6, I want to commence our reading at verse uh, number 5. It says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues on the street corners. Uh, that they may be seen of others. And truly, he says, uh, I say to you that you have received your reward. But when you pray, go into your room, shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and the father who sees in secret will reward you. He says, and, and when you pray, do not heap upon empty phrases as the Gentiles do for they uh, think that they will be heard because of their many words. And do not be like them, for your father knows what you have need of before you ask him. He says, pray like this, our father, come on, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven other debtors and lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Listen, this passage today before us is a unique piece because not only is it found in Matthew chapter six, but it's also found in Luke chapter 11. He gives us a much condensed version of the passage, uh, just speaking to God the Father, his will and our needs. And so when you look at this, one of my favorite authors is a, is a Asian theologian by the name of Watchman Nee. He says that prayer is the nerve that moves the muscle of the omnipotent. Come. Say it so again, Kate. You, <laughs> Say it again, Kate. This is not mine. This is Watchman Nee in his book entitled The Normal Christian Life. You got to get it. You got to, oh my God. If you want to get another book, it's entitled The Normal Christian Life. Asian guy named Watchman, last name is N-E-E, -E, Watchman Nee. He says, he says um, that prayer is the nerve that moves the muscle of the omnipotent. Come on, God. If you want oh. God to flex, I mean, if you want to put a big flex in your life, you better allow God to get on his nerves to, I mean, to really flex in your life. If you want to see God move, and if you want to get on God's nerves, learn how to connect, as Pastor Nate has involved us, in this area and this arena called prayer. As we look at it, look what Jesus says. He's teaching his disciples. He's just come out of the wilderness being tempted of the devil. He, su he survives that through scripture and through prayer. And the first thing he talks about after the Beatitudes, this Sermon on the Mount that Jesus teaches, as some have related to the fact that he's just like Moses. Whenever Moses wanted to teach people and get their attention, he would teach them on the mountain because the mountain was where they declared that was the highest place they could connect with God. Teach, and so what he does in this passage is he, he keeps it really unique. Number one, he talks in verse number five about the problem of prayer. The problem of prayer. I'm going to get these notes for you, Doc. Go ahead. There are three issues that mess up our prayer life. He says, being seen, repetition, and unforgiven. Those okay. are the three things that ruin our prayer life. Trying to be seen. He says, 
God makes a change and pivots and says, listen, go into your secret closet so you're not seen, so that the works of God may be on display. He said the other issue that's messing up our prayer life is repetition. People know what you're going to say before you already say it. I mean, your prayers are always the same. Why pray the same prayers if God doesn't move the same? So he says the thing that's messing us up is wanting to be seen. Secondly, he says the thing that messes us up, Pastor Nate, is repetition. Oh. He says the third thing, and then he, 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 he does this bookend type of thing with verse number five and verse number 14. He sandwiches everything together between verse five and verse 14. He says unforgiveness will mess up your prayer life. Come on, you Kennedy. trying to be the big bad wolf. You trying to spill tea, you trying to throw shade, you trying to be the biggest boss, you're going to mess up trying to be the big bad wolf and let people provoke you into not saying, I forgive you, into saying, that's all right, God will bless me. God is saying to us, the problem of prayer is three things, being, wanting to be seen, Hulk Kennedy, repetition, and, and unforgiveness. If I was in Macon, I would I would say just like James Brown, you talking loud, but I ain't said nothing. And so in this passage today, Kennedy. what he does is, is in verse 14, he sandwiches it between verse five and says, how dare you want me to forgive you and you can't forgive your brother who you see. Talk, he, Kennedy. he says that's going to hinder your prayer life. And then in first Peter chapter three, check it out. For all the spouses and booed up folk in the room, he says, brothers, our foolishness and our side pieces will mess up our prayer life. Talk, Kennedy. We'll mess it up. He said, that's what we'll do. So, so, so here's what he's sharing with us in the problem of prayer. Those Good three God things, Almighty. seen, repetition, and unforgiven. Here's the question I got for him, Pastor Nate, since we're keeping it 100. Uh, which one you struggling with? You praying because you want to be seen? You struggling? You 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 struggling with prayer because of repetition, or is it number three? You struggling with the answers the answers of prayer because of the unforgiveness in your heart? Somebody said I ain't got now one of them. I got all three, all of the above. I want to be seen at the singles meeting. I want to be seen at the Thanksgiving dinner being prayed. I'm going to pray the same prayers. And then I'm unforgiving in my heart. Yeah. He said, those are the things that'll mess us up. Kennedy, can you, talk about, want, can you talk a minute about that repetition piece? Because a lot of people want to know this. I get this question a lot, man. I want to get your theological perspective on. So are we telling people that let, let's say we're believing God for a job or believing God to open the door. Are we saying that I can't ask God over and over again to give me the job, to open the door, to send the man to, to you know, how would you define repetition? What is it not saying? What do you believe it is saying? I believe it's, I believe what it, what it's not saying is, is you can continue, you can continue to believe God for that thing, mm -hmm. but I, I don't believe he's saying continue to ask me because if you've asked me for it, number one, I'm not hard of hearing. That's good. That's and number good. two, I already know your needs before you even have an ask. But remember, James says in James chapter three and verse 13, he says, we have not because we ask not. And then he says, when we ask, we ask amiss. He's saying we're asking for things we're not ready for. Come on, so okay. it's not that God don't want you booed up. It's not that God doesn't want you in real estate. It's not that God doesn't want you to go back to Morris Brown. He, it's not that he does not want you to connect uh, there at UCLA Berkeley. He's saying that he wants us to be prepared for what he has prepared for us. Say that so again. That's, I'm so, that's what bro. I'm saying. He wants us to be prepared. Ah for what he has prepared for us. So he says, here's the big deal. Don't make me look like a fool when I give you what you've been asking for. Don't, don't, don't pimp me. Don't, don't, don't put me out there like that. Oh, God made a way. He did, but you, you made him look bad on the fact that you wasn't ready for what you're asking for. 
And God knows that little bit of fame will mess us up because if he gives it to us, our prayer life will wane and be lean because we're dependent on our fame, our fortune, and the likes on Instagram and the retweets on Twitter that will mess us up every single time when he talks about our repetition. Kennedy, you are teaching, man. Push it, Doc. Push this thing. So what he's saying, so what he's saying about this repetition thing, since we're, since we're on that, let's, let's talk about that. He's saying that the greater our cares, the more genuine our prayers will be. Mm. If your cares aren't great, he knows you want to watch cable. He knows you need power. He knows you want to go and get the kids stuff for Christmas. He knows that, right? But he's saying the greater our cares, the more genuine our prayers will be. Come so on, if you don't have great care, Woo! your Woo! prayers will be disingenuous to the Lord. Doc, I am taking notes. Talk, man. And so here's what he here's what he does. Here's what he wants us to know in our flesh, right? He's saying to us, now this is not mine. This is this is Max Lucado in his book entitled uh after uh before a man his book entitled before a man max lucado had his book on prayer entitled before a man he mm -hmm. says this uh that the power uh, of prayer is in the one who hears not the one who says oh god that's that's max lucado that ain't mine mm -hmm. he, he it's, worth says, repeating. Uh, it's worth he repeating says, the power of prayer is in the one who hears and not in the one who says. So, so it's not about your grandiose vocabulary. It's not about you being able to pronounce words like uh, Australopithecus Africanus or Deus Escondidas. You, you, you don't have to be able to say those type of words. All you got to be able to say is have mercy. All you got to be able to say is, this Lord, I need you like never before. Sometimes your prayer, like mine, even in the midst of this COVID has been, don't forget me. Come on, man. That, that's a simple prayer. I mean, if Peter sinking can say, Lord, save me, that was his prayer, period. <laughs> I wish I had, wish I had some uh, sweetie chicks in the room today, period. That was his prayer, save me. That, that was it. And the Lord picked him up from- Let me read this, Kennedy. Let me read Whitney's comment, man. It's the right. repetition for me. It mm -hmm. feels like soon as I feel blessed, like start moving fast and my prayer life and spiritual life gets neglected until I fall short again. Mm -hmm. Then I'm looking for the spare tire instead of thanking God and communicating with him regularly. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you Whit, for being honest about that. You ain't by yourself. That's, that's what we need. That's exactly what we need to know that God has our back more than anything else, and we have to take him at his word. That's, that's for certain. So he talks about this pattern of prayer, but then look at what he says. Secondly, in verse six, he says a word about the place of prayer, the place of prayer. I can remember growing up, I had a buddy of mine whose house wasn't the best, and he had some cracks in the ceiling, and I say, this must be where y'all pray it, uh, because I can see what God is doing in this place. But the question is today is where do you go to find God? Where do you go to meet him? Every time God did something significant in the life of his people, he always met with them on a mountain. Abraham, Genesis 22, he meets with him to com connect with him on a mountain. Talk, Kennedy. Moses, Exodus chapter 14 through Exodus chapter 20. He meets with him on a mountain. Oh, man. Ezekiel 37, son of man, can these bones live? He connects with him on the mountain. First uh, Kings 18, what about Elijah, Mount Carmel? He meets with bro on the mountain. Here in Matthew 5 through 7, Jesus is meeting with the fellows in the fellowship with them on the mountain. Teach Matthew me. chapter 17, Mount Transfiguration, where Simon Peter says, it's good for us to be here. Where does he meet God? You got it, right on the mountain. That's what he does. That's where 
he meets us. And so you ought to have not only a specific prayer, but you ought to have a specific place where God and you connect. So, so let's good. take it a step further. That's good, Here, man. Here's what he's saying today, that when I go in that secret place, here's what he's saying. He's saying to us that prayer is the hand of faith on the doorknob of our heart that invites Jesus to enter. Prayer God, you is the place, me. is the hand of faith where the doorknob, watch this, of our heart, and we invite God into that secret place. It may be the shower. It may be that two-mile run in the morning. It may be on your way to work with no music on. It, it may be that quiet time. It may be at 4.30 in the morning. It may be while you laying next to your spouse in the bed and they, they sleep and ain't nothing but tears flowing and nothing but grunts coming out because you remember in Romans 8, he says on, he communicates with us through groans that words cannot be expressed. Come on, sir. So sometimes when Big Mama and them used to moan, that wasn't just a Baptist thing. That was Bible. In the kitchen. I, I, yes, know, I, know, I know we want to say, oh, that's just Baptist. They just moaning and all that. No, that's Bible. There has to be a there has to be a place. There has to be a specific place where no distractions, no Facebook notifications are going off, no Instagram likes are coming up on your screen. Uh, no particular emails are coming in reminding you of Zoom meetings uh, that you have and ministry mm -hmm. obligations. What he's sagaciously suggesting to us is that there has to be this place where you and God connect. And that's what he's saying about our prayers being super significant to the Lord. Yeah. So here Shalom. it is. Shalom, I'm Pastor. Let me read this, Kennedy. Pastor right. Dennis Hodges. Shalom, man. When the dots are connected on the mountain, he will give us the mountaintop experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got pastors in here shouting today, Doc. Pastor Jared <laughs> Moulton. God bless you, man. You got me and a God in here shouting, Doc. This My, is good teaching, man. This is good teaching. Push it, Doc. So, so he says, number one, there's a problem of prayer. What are the three problems? Here it is, church. One to be seen, our repetition and being unforgiven. He sandwiches them uh, between verse 5 and verse 14, right? Secondly, he says there, there's a place of prayer. There ought to be a place where you and God connect. Because every time you see Jesus and the disciples, he's always on a mountain by himself to pray. Even when the in Mark chapter 4, right, the disciples are in the midst of the storm, where is Jesus? Up on the mountain praying. He's not praying for himself. He's praying for them. Come on, man. He, he's praying for them that their faith won't fail. Even when he met Peter and asked him, do you love me? He said, I'm praying that your faith won't fail. Come right. On. So, so he's saying that. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a problem of prayer. There's a place of prayer, but then nine through 13 and past eight, here it is. There should be a pattern of prayer. That's not, good. Not, not a repetition, but a pattern of prayer. Say a pattern. P A. Uh, P a t t e r n. Okay, I'm pattern. sorry. Yeah. And so if we and so if we want to break it down simple, we could say in verses seven through eight, he says number one, keep it simple. Then verses nine through thirteen, he we could talk about follow the sample. If we wanted hey, to just do it that way, I'm done in our that. hermeneutical <laughs> breakdown. Uh, so so he says there's this pattern. So so here's the pattern. Yeah. He says, in order to pray. There must first be worship. He says, our father, hallowed be thy name. Man. That's worship. That's worship. You have not, you have not worshiped until you've given. That's why we say, let's offer up a word of prayer. <laughs> Would you offer a word of prayer? That's giving. What do you say when you give at, at, at Pastor Nate's? We're going to give now on GiveLify and you, on PushPay. We're going to off the offering period. We have to offer prayer. It's giving. You have not worshiped until you've given. He says, he says a word about it. He says, I'll worship. He says, hallowed be thy name. The Greek, for, for those who are a little deep, uh, who hadn't said nothing yet, I want to hit the deep folk. Uh, 
It's the Greek word hagiazii. Uh, it's in the present active indicative. Watch this. It's present because it's happening right now. Come it's on, access sir. to the fact that they have to get beyond their problems, get to that place so that the Lord's name might be holy. And it's Come indicative on, to the fact that they cannot move without the presence and the pattern and the place Talk. of God. Talk, Kennedy. He says the word, the pattern should be our worship. So when I pray, check it out, saints. It's an act of worship. No worship leader, no B3 bumping you, no drums, no acoustic guitar, no Dietrich Haddon, no Ricky Diller, nothing like that. No Malcolm Christopher, none of that's going on. We worship the Lord in prayer because it's an offering unto God. It's a act of our worship. Hallowed, I make his name holy merely by praying. Watch this. I make it holy by not praying to be seen. I make it holy by not doing repetitious acts. I make it holy merely because of not doing, having unforgiveness in my heart. That's how I make prayer holy. It's a worship moment. I lift up my hands. Uh, in the Kojic church, we would say, lift up your palms to give it to God and then turn your palms in to receive it from God. There were a myriad of, of different ways in, in, in the which they prayed in the Bible. Some would lay face down. They would lay prostrate in the Bible to pray. But he talks about this worshipful time. So prayer ought to be refreshing as worship. It all is it's a worship. But then he says, oh. Hallowed be thy name, because we offer a word of prayer. And that, that's the thing. So he says not only not only is the pattern dealing with our worship, but the pattern de deals with our will. The pattern deals with our will. So here it is. This is not mine again. This is Watchman Nee. He says that God's, watch this here, that God's will is not always good, but his will is always in God. And God is always good. So he wants us to know that our worship helps us pray. And then our will, and we're praying, not my will, but thy will be done. What does the will of God look like? What's it sound like? How do I know when I'm praying God's will? Here's how you know when you're praying God's Kennedy, will. Kennedy, deal with that, man. No, you're That's praying a tough God's will church. When you're not praying to be seen, you know you're praying God's will. Come on, sir. When you're not repetitious. You know you're praying God's will when you're not doing things with unforgiveness. That's how you know God. This is your will for me to forgive. This is your will for me to do these things. So that's the will of God. Notice the pattern, our worship, our will. And thirdly, my God, he says, I want. Whoa, time out. Flag on the play. Here it is. God puts his worship and his will above our want. My Come God. on, Kennedy Young. Teach, God, boy. His worship and his will Good above God. me eating, above me getting my diabetic medicine. He puts his will above me and my wife reconciling. What kind of God do we serve? One who wants to be worshipped in every aspect of our life. That's what that's the type of God we're serving. Because here's what he wants us to know. You're never without hope because you're never without prayer. And as long as you got a mouth and can pray, you're never without hope because you're able to connect to God and link up with him. And I want you to know you're never without hope, saints of God, because you're never without prayer. Remember. Here, here, here's what, here's what, here's what uh, uh, Dr. Kim, uh, Timothy uh, Keller says. He says that prayer is being able to see God with your eyes closed. <laughs> so, if, so if 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 you want if you want to see God, 
Move in your life. Close your eyes. Here's Charles Stanley. Charles Stanley, in his book entitled A Bend in the Road, he says, the distance between your prayer and the problem is eight inches because that's the distance between your knees and the floor. Y'all, man, you got to stop for a second. Y'all, hold on, Doc. Please, let me, hold on, Kennedy. Everybody take a sip. Kennedy, take a sip of your water, whatever you're doing. I got to. <laughs> Y'all, get ready for your questions to come in. Q&A. I need to take a sip. In order, I'm I'm on this, bro. I'm on yeah. this, bro. And you gotta fit you, you're gonna take a few questions, man. I hope we had 286 <laughs> people yeah, live yeah. right now. 286 yeah. of y'all. Listen to what he said. In order to see God, yeah. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Timothy that's Timothy George. Yeah, Dr. Timothy. In, George. Timothy George. And then Dr. Charles Stanley in his book entitled The Bend in the Road. He says that the shortest distance between your problems and your solution is eight inches because that's the distance between your knees and the floor. If you want, if you want, I mean, if, if you're willing to take eight inches for your day, that that will get solutions, that will get kids, that will get kids back in fellowship, that will get uh, that will get uh, cousins at the crack house. Uh, that that will get uh, nieces off the twerk team if we <laughs> twerk on our knees to God. So so he says. Um, not only does prayer help our the pattern is our our worship, our walk, and then our wills, our will, and then he says uh, our wants. Right. So he says lastly, uh, because it talks about our daily bread. Now, yep. God is going to give us what we need for today. Not going to give us what we want for tomorrow. That, that was the thing with, with the children of, of Israel. Because think about it. As I share with Eastgate, the New Testament is written for us, but it's not written to us. Because we're not in the first century. And so what Jesus is trying to do is, is re remind the people, the Jewish readers in the book of Matthew, of how God met their needs daily as they walked through the wilderness and he gave them manna from on high every day he says daily provision all i'm going to look out for you is for the day because i want to remind you of what god has done that's it right there miss white one day at a time matter of fact my grandmother used to sing that song beatrice Tatum of macon georgia was singing that song one day at a time sweet jesus tis all that i could do and that's all we can have. That's all we can handle. Why try to handle tomorrow's problems with today's strength? You can't do that. Come on. And man. we have to pray to God and ask Him. His liberty, Doc. Increase our wants to say, God, not my want, but Your will. And in this moment, worship. But then, lastly, look at this. Before our question answers, He says a word about our walk and forgive us our debts. Man. Our walk. So first, look at he talks about our horizontal walk, our horizontal nature of our prayer, doing it with God. <clears throat> then he starts talking about, he talks about our vertical rather with God, and then our horizontal with man. That makes yeah. a cross right there. Now we're able, because I'm praying God's will, I'm able to speak to you even though it's hurting me. I'm able to I'm able to double back and say it's all good. I got you. I, I understand that. Now, that don't mean we're going to kick it like we used to, but but it does mean I've given God my issue about what we what we squabbling about. Come on, That's man. what it does do. And so it strengthens my walk. So prayer strengthens my worship. Prayer strengthens my 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 acceptance of God's will. Jesus is prayer good. strengthens the things I think I can't live without. This and good. prayer strengthens my walk with my fellow man, because here's what he wants the disciples to understand. You're going to deal with some people who don't look like you, who don't think like you, and who are not going to treat you like I do. So he says, I want you to strengthen that part so that when you pray, it's not a genie in a bottle. It's not a quick fix. You're working on your worship. You're working on 
my will. You're working on your want and you're working on your walk. So here's what he's saying. Here it is. Prayer is the window that God has placed in the walls of our world. And we have to have the dexterity to open the window and hear his voice and open the window and invoke the presence of God into our world. That's good, Kay. God, here it is. Don't miss it. Prayer is the window that God has placed into the walls of our lives. But it's Whew. up to us well, this to is good. open the window to hear God. And it's up to us to open the window and to invoke the presence of God into our little world. That's why I believe Mal Malachi says he'll open the windows of heaven. But he only opens those windows when we're not trying to be seen, when we're not trying to get in this repetition, and then when we're not trying to harbor unforgiveness in our hearts. So here it is. He's saying, if we really want to strengthen our prayer life, keep it simple. He says, secondly, follow, follow the sample. But then for our time together today, I wanted you to know that there's a problem with prayer in verse number five. There should be a place of prayer in verse number six. And we close it out by talking about the pattern of prayer that deals with our worship, deals with his will, deals with our wants, and then it deals, lastly, with our walk with God. Hope that was good. Somebody okay. type in, open the window. Open the window. Open the window. Type that in. Open, open that. Window. Open Charlene, that let me read. What, and y'all, I'm going to take, because Pastor K is a senior pastor of a of a great church, growing church. They have a staff brunch today. So I'm going to get him off. I'll take three good questions. Charlene said, there was a time in my life in which I prayed to God so much and regularly that it began to feel like a conversation. Mm. And the yeah. most amazing thing was God would respond. He became my advisor and counselor, my father and friend. The more I sought him, the clearer my path became, the clearer my path became. But when I haven't been about his business or time with him, life gets unclear and the best decisions aren't made. Open the window. Come on, man. Charlene, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Real testimony in your life. Open the window, Lakeisha. That's it. Y'all, I'll take some questions. Kennedy, let me ask you, man, as a pastor, as a Christian, why is prayer difficult for so many? Man, has prayer ever been difficult for you? What, what makes prayer, if it's such a wonderful thing, you gave us all these nuggets, man, prayer, the P's and the alliteration, the exegesis of Matthew 6. Why is it so difficult, man? To pray. Uh, well, I think it's difficult merely because that uh, that's why it's called a spiritual discipline. You yep. have to you have to be disciplined to it. It has to be something that's that's a that's a part of of what we're doing. And then I think the other question we got to ask ourselves is 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 how different would our life be if prayer was at the circumference of our life? Come on, man. What worries would we not have? What issues would be resolved? What inferior things would I be over? What judgmental things would I not possess? How much will my self-confidence exude even more? And then, yeah, for myself, yeah, prayer has, has, has been difficult at times, especially during the COVID-19, because uh, you know as well as I do, you see members everywhere else, but uh, in, in staff meetings or in ministry opportunities um and then even for myself personally you know um seeing my dad struggle with parkinson's uh it's tough to see him pastoring for 30 years and uh just being a fluid voice in the kingdom and moving and grooving to now me having me and my brother having to cut his hair when he cut his own hair and having to to bathe them and having to shave them and have so those questions linger in your mind about god why would this happen and then when my when my, my wife and I when we lost our, our baby, you know, a difficult time to pray because you're trying to internalize what you uh try to uh try to bring about as a uh as a strategy. Mm, and, it's, and, it's, and it's unique in those challenging times where you have to 
continue to press and open that window and crawl to that window if you have to uh, in those times. And even when financial things, when you're not on the road and you're trying to provide for your family, it's always hard to say, God, why, why now? Why, why is it so hard now? And I believe the sister that was just before this comment said that, that Satan makes it so easy for us to want to quit and makes us want to give up and makes us want to throw in the, the towel. So yeah, prayer, even for the pastor, even for the, the son of a pastor, it's, it's hard for us uh, at times, but you got to continue to do like Paul Morton says and press your way through and continue to have that discipline. Because once you get that discipline, uh, it's, it's always something you run back to. Because if you have that discipline uh, to get up every morning and go work out or to do certain, such and such, you ought to have that same discipline uh, as it relates to speaking to God. Because think about it. You get a chance to talk to him mm -hmm. more than mm -hmm. anybody else. I mean, that's, that's something else. When you get a chance to connect with God like none other, that's something that ought to make us want to be able to connect to the power uh, and become a conduit for others. Because here's the thing, God wants us to pray because somebody's going to ask us to do something that we can't do in our own strength anyway. So why not go ahead and connect to the power that God's already provided? That's good. Nicole, who I love, I'm proud of, Atlanta, Georgia, man. Nicole said, I think sometimes it's because we put too much into it. Sometimes mm -hmm. we also have a conversation with him. Right. Prayer is to can do it to God. Uh, I well, love that. There's another question. Gina Lou uh, has a question. Um, why do we get upset with God when he gives us what we pray for, but finding out that it's not what we really wanted or needed because it's not on God's time? Some people who get upset with God. I mean, and I think this kind of ties in, Kennedy. We don't always wrap that thy will be done in our prayers. Mm -mm. And so we're angry. Any thoughts on the emotions of this thing of prayer and God's response is not what we actually wanted mm -hmm. uh, or desired, if you will. Yeah. And I think um, in that. Great question, what, Jay. What God wants us to understand is, is that prayer, number one, shouldn't be emotional. It should be spiritual. You, you, should, you should never pray angry. Uh, that's why God says, don't go to, don't go to bed angry. Don't, don't, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. How are you going to get up and you, and pray in anger? You're not going to be able to, to be effective. Um, you're just going to be mouthing words. You're going to try to muster up the strength. And that's, the, that's the hard part, uh, for us. And so he wants us to know that prayer should not be an emotional fortitude. It should not be this emotional, this emotional interlude that starts your day. It should be a spiritual connection that you reconnect every day with God, no matter how many multiple times a day it is that we reconnect and reconvene with ourselves. What I try to tell people all the time about prayer is start here first, right? So I tell people, journal your prayers. That's and the reason you journal it is because one, you're able to go back and read it. Two, you're able to see how God answered. And three, you're able to see how God's grown you when your prayers first started. Because that's what he's teaching the disciples. Don't make prayer emotional. Don't make it selfish. Your will, your wants, your desires. This entire thing is inculcated by the worship and the will of God. And that's what he wants us to understand. Don't make prayer emotional. Because not one time did, did even Jesus pray emotional. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. As sweats, uh, as drops of blood came down. Even on the cross, he wasn't emotional. He just asked, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he wasn't really asking him. He was really quoting from Psalm 22. So on the cross, he was still worshipful as he was hanging there in his moment of prayer. So that's what I would suggest to say. Don't make prayer emotional. Oh, I don't feel like doing this. Oh, my God. This is going to be so hard to pray. No, it's not. Not when you're spiritual versus emotional. Last comment, y'all. I'm going to get my brother out of here, man. Thank you, Kennedy. And we're going to be able to sow into his life. And I have a few announcements. During this disaster here in Kentucky, we're praying. But how do we pray when things are so difficult? 
it just doesn't look it just doesn't look bad here. It also it smells bad because there's so much destruction. What can I say to the victims I come in contact with to get their prayer to connect with God? Man, she's in Kentucky. Clearly, yeah. Patricia is near devastation. Yeah, my uh, the, if Stacy's still on uh, from Dallas, that's my business manager of our church. She's from she's from Paducah. Her and her husband uh, Mac are from Paducah. They came they came to Dallas to come back and care for her father, who was a pastor. Um, what I would say to people is one, trust God's timing, and two, there's nothing you can say. Much like Pastor Nate and I do at funerals. I have one Saturday. There's really nothing you can say at a funeral to make people feel better. Right. No matter how well prepared, no matter how much you study, there's nothing you can really can say. I think when you go to minister to those people with the presence, that says enough. And then just be prayerful in that moment. As you pray, to, as you pray in your spirit, Lord, give them strength. Lord, just help them to hold on. God, give them the resources. God, open up that door. God, help FEMA, help Red Cross, help me, help our church to connect. And those are the things, because I think in this, uh, in this right now society, we think we should always have the answers to everything. And if we're, and if we're to have the answers, then what does God for? Come on, man. He doesn't want us to be able to say everything to them. There are sometimes people just say, I sure appreciate you being here and don't know the entire time you're praying for them. God, give them the resources, give them the strength. Lord, give, help the insurance to come through, help the deductibles to be met, help all these, uh, help, help the post-traumatic stress that's going to come on their lives. Give them healing today, God. And as you're just standing there, you don't have to say anything. A lot of people, that's where they go wrong, wanting to say so much. My dad would always say, the greatest ministry we have is the ministry of prayer. And I think that's more than enough. Yeah. Y'all listen, Pastor Kennedy Young, Eastgate Church, Dallas, Texas. My little bro don't do Facebook, but he does IG. How can they follow you on yeah. IG, bro? Yeah, at uh, Kennedy Kennedy Young, uh, uh, just K-N-N-D-Y underscore Y-O-U-N-G. Took the vowels out of my first name uh, on Instagram and Twitter. And then our church is Eastgate Church uh, dash Dallas on Facebook. And then YouTube at Eastgate Missionary Baptist Church. And you can follow us there. Eastgate. And then our website, EastgateChurchDallas.org. Amen. Great. We love to connect with you. Y'all, listen, I want you... Uh, to hear this very clearly. I want us to be a blessing to my brother. If you would like to put in the comments. And again, we allow you to sow into the men and women of God as you desire uh, for the word. Um, just put in the comments, Pastor K, Pastor K. And that's earmarked to go directly to Pastor Young. So uh, thank you so much. Faith Room, this coming Friday, I need you to do me a big favor. This coming Friday, uh, it is our goal next week. Cherie, who's our co-host, who's watching right now, shout out to her finishing her semester. I'm so super proud of what Cherie's doing while maintaining this platform, while working in full-time ministry. Um, this coming Friday, we're going to ask everybody, $10, $20 seed to make sure, Kennedy, we're able to bless two families, man. We want to, mm -hmm. we want to, take care of their entire Christmas from helping their kids get mm -hmm. toys, pajamas to making sure they have a good dinner. And oh, yeah. God put that on my heart to do, man, two families. So everybody Friday, even if you don't sow, everybody who can give $10 or $20, the whole room, some of you may can give more. Uh, I am not about putting families on front street, but we will report the families we were able to bless. Uh, but I want those kids to have a bicycle. Mm -hmm. I want those kids to be able to have a good dinner, man. I, I am, um, and KK, I get emotional, man, because I, I think sometimes we just think, uh, you know, the things we have, man, that, that we deserve it, man. And we, and we couldn't be in other people's situation, man. We, it could be me. Yeah. You no. Know, um, so Y'all, we never push money on this platform. You sow as God leads you. But this is the season where we can help somebody and to be a blessing to somebody. We also have our Faith Room Conference, y'all. We're 
we're moving toward the 200 mark now. We're moving toward the 200 mark with registration. Um, I need you to go ahead and register. Um, I know a lot of you are going to wait. The early bird registration ends next month. We know that the first part, first couple of weeks of January, then the registration is 125. So we are excited. Vegas will never be the same because we're going to be there for fellowship, for fun. But then we're going to be there to get refueled uh, in the word of God. So this coming Friday, y'all put your Starbucks money aside, put your Chick-fil-A money aside and say, you know what, Pastor Nate, I'm sowing 10. I'm going to sow 20 to make sure that two families. And y'all, Vanessa, who's in here. Uh, she did something so powerful when they were doing a drive uh, for uh, less fortunate kids. She said, make sure the toys are over $15. Right. So I don't want to just uh, have, you know, bicycles that are from the thrift store. Or I want to be able, they can go to Walmart and get a bike. That's the type of seed I believe God is going to allow us to sow. I'm sowing my family, man. I'm sowing a significant seed because I don't know how many times I thank God for my mom. I didn't grow up where I had to struggle, but I had family members, cousins, tons. You know, I've seen it, man. Christmas wasn't the same. And um, uh, I, I just can't let people live that way. I can't help everybody, but the people mm -hmm. we can help, Kennedy, we're going to try to do that. So, uh, yeah. man, I'm going to have you to pray us out, man. We're going to, you gonna eat today? Was your wife in today, man? No, she's at work. She's at I work. I thought she was in the comments, man. Um, oh, but, maybe I don't know. Maybe she was. Or my mom. Or my mom. I don't know. A shout out to the Eastgate family, uh, yeah. first lady. God bless you, mom. God bless you, y'all. Kennedy is um, a, a great teacher. So go follow him and uh, and uh, stay stay close to him. So. Thank you so much, man. Uh, pray us out of here, man. And I'll call you later today, bro. Yeah, all right. God, we thank you for this opportunity to learn. We thank you for the opportunity to be stretched and to grow. Thank you for the platform that's provided by Pastor Nate to continue to touch this world with the technology uh, yes, of the world. And so, God, I pray now for the families that will help. I thank you for those who are already preparing to sow seed, that you would challenge us to go a bit further. Um, that we could give gifts that we would desire to receive. And so, God, I pray now that as we pray, help us to understand and move beyond our problems. Help us to find that that place and help us to get into that pattern of making prayer a worshipful time, a time where your will is accepted and a time where our wants are taking second place or the passenger seat. And God, help us with our walk as we continue to pray. And so, God, I pray that your will will be done and that your people were blessed. In Jesus' name, we ask it all and pray. Amen. 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 Kennedy, I'm going to let you sign on off, man. I'm going to answer a few more questions. God bless you, bro. All I see right. you, man. All right. Listen, uh, Ash, we're doing a conference in Vegas. If you would be kind enough, Ashley, if you're on Facebook, go follow the Faith Room, Ash. Uh, or you can send us an inbox to the Faith Room. Our co-host, Elder Cherie, will get back with you um, and, and respond to those. Uh, and I appreciate that so much, Ash. We're going to do a three-day conference there. Uh, Y'all, I'm going to try to get with my brother Richard Miller to get him in this week, uh, either tomorrow or Friday. He's in here, so he hears it now. Uh, we're going to be dealing with tomorrow growing up in my uh, faith, growing up in my faith, my faith, growing up in my faith. And then we're going to close out on Friday with growing up in my speech, my talk. Uh, how I talk. Uh, so we're going to be looking at this. Cherie will be back tomorrow. Again, y'all, Friday, $10, $20. Put it aside. Uh, we're going to sow two families, y'all, from coast to coast. That's what the Lord said, from coast to coast. I'm getting emotional now because I already know it's going to bless so many lives, man. I love you all. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a coach in your life to be a leader. I'm not your pastor. Some of you, I am your pastor. It's not about you being a part of any church, man. This is about hope. This is about making sure you have hope uh, as you lead and live in this Christian life. Y'all life is a vapor. Life is short. Uh, cherish it. Keep coming to this platform. I pray that you will continue to receive us as we walk in integrity, as we try to walk in character. We want to live, practice what we preach. Pray that over everybody in the body of Christ. 
that our preaching would not be a stumbling block, that when we preach to others, we won't be a castaway. I believe integrity matters. I believe character matters. And I want to be a pastor who not only talks it, but who also lives it. Pray that over my life to live it, to live it. It's more than speech. It's in my action. I love you. Thank every pastor who supports us. Man, we on this team together. We in this boat together. Man, you roll, I roll. We're in this together. I love you, Faith Room. It's going to be a great Wednesday because I've determined that it's going to be a great Wednesday. Remember, y'all, we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from the place of it. I love you. Take care. And I'll see you, Lord willing, in the morning. Peace.